oh, it's so, so big to, 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 for me to actually stand in front of you all and give this TED talk. Uh, it was one of my dreams, actually, uh, to be in front of these audiences. And, and then I watched a lot of TED talks when I was younger. And I was looking for, you know, my way. And I was, I was trying to find it. it. It was tough. And today, when I arrived here, I listened for these brilliant speeches. I realized that, oh, we all have so much in common. I'm 29 years old, and I went through all of this, what, what uh, <laughs> these speeches were, people were telling you before. And food, multitasking, and, and finding, finding my way. And this is where it started. It started in Vilnius University, in Institute for International Relations and Political Sciences. I wrote this program. It was good. Yeah, it was amazing. I was, I was a superstar there. I was just rocking there. Um, everybody knew me because I was loud. I was always had my opinion. I was speaking everywhere with everyone. I was friends with everyone. I liked everyone and, and, and most people liked me or hated me, but they always had an opinion about me. But, uh, but what, what you want to be, you know? And that was the question that I didn't want to be a politician straight away, you know? Just a politician that is good in politics and that's it. Something was missing. I got all that skill set of, you know, being able to talk to to make arguments and then and, and in, inspire people and actually do the change, you know? But, but it was like, like having a car with a full tank but not knowing the destination and not knowing the direction where I want to drive. And that was, that was frustrating. I was, I was that, that young guy with all of those big dreams, you know, doing everything, uh, multitasking. I was, working in, in, with an amazing team 12 hours a day and then partying four hours a day. And uh, the life was amazing. I was living in center of illness and, but I didn't, I didn't know how to get to that point where, you know, the, 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 you can sit down and think that, yeah, my life was a success. I didn't know how to go there. And I took a gap year. I took two years of gap year to think and to figure out so one day I just made a list of best paid uh, industries. Simple, you know, I, I don't take drugs. Uh, I don't know much about them, so I'm a little bit afraid of them. Uh, guns, also not my thing. Pharmacy, it was a little bit too late when you're 22, 23 uh, to, 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 to change the industry from Bachelor of Arts to, to medical studies, it's almost impossible. So that was oil and gas and energy industry. Uh, but there, but to, to, to go into energy industry, you have to be an uh, engineer. You have to know physics, you have to know real sciences. And my background was in, in, in Bachelor of Arts, in arts, because po politics is an art. And that, that was my first equation, the real life equation that I had to solve. So how to go from Bachelor of Arts to Master of Sciences, that, because that was, you know, I had to go into energy sector. So I solved it by enrolling into Lund University. This is one of the top 100 universities in the world and its environmental management program is uh, one of 10 best in Europe. And I was very lucky to, to get there. Um, the thing is what, when, when, I, when I signed up for, for, for this program, I thought that I'm gonna be the guy who will, it was environmental ma management and policy that wasn't energy engineering or else but that was the, my doors uh, to, to the sector and I thought that I will learn the language of an enemy of an environmentalist and then I will go to the rich guy in oil company and say hey listen I know how to deal with all of those you know guys that chain themselves to the trees I know how to deal with them you know because I learned and uh, learned the language of an enemy but it turned out, when I, when I started learning about more and more, uh, actually that was the first thing what I learned when I came to Sweden, when I arrived to the, uh, to, to the institute, there was a conference going on, and the first speech in the conference, 
And the first sentence in that keynote was that if you're not building a business case out of sustainability, please stop talking because people stopped listening. Because everything is about the money. If you're not making money, you won't do that. That's how government thinks. That's how companies think. It's sad, but it's true. Nobody will spend just to spend uh, money just to, you know, to, I don't know, to say that I spend money. That, that's stupid. And I'll come back to that. Uh, the thing is that then I realized that uh, I might, it's better for me, you know, to find the way how to make, um, how to make that um, business case out of sustainability. And being the 22nd floor of the huge skyscraper somewhere, you know, in, in, in the big business center, and prepare a speech to the big uh, meeting of the board. And then, you know, I see myself in, in a very expensive suit, uh, walking in that meeting room, preparing the speech for a board of directors, and then looking down the street and seeing the guy downstairs, uh, in, in, in front of the building, chained to the tree with all of those banners that trees have lives and, and all of that, and then thinking, hey, maybe we're fighting for the same reason. Just we chose different options. And, 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 and uh, by uh, studying in Lund University, I realized that what I want to do um, is to find the business cases in sustainability and make it happen. And it's not a bad thing, you know, to, 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 to be affluent, to be wealthy, to, to get rich. It's not a bad thing. And you can do that by, um, by thinking about sustainability and thinking about the planet. Because now, you know, it's not a very good place. We have a lot of scars. We left a lot of scars that is so difficult to treat and cure. And uh, yeah, that's us. We did that. And especially we did that by, by putting our plastic wastes into the oceans. And that, that's one of my favorite stories. Uh, 40 years ago, in the middle of Turkmenistan, the Soviets found a huge oil well. And they thought, oh my god, we're going to be rich because we will take that drill, that oil, and sell it. And we're going to be rich. Uh, but there was a smell of methane. So they thought, well, okay, there's methane. If you really just light it up, it will blow, you know, the huge fire, and then, and then we can uh, drill the oil. What actually happened, that was one of the largest gas re natural gas reservoir in the world, and it still keeps burning till this day. 40 years, gate to hell, man-made gate to hell. And this, food waste, that's one of the most terrible things. 40% of all of our food ends up in the landfills. And that's the statistics, meaning that if you eat all your food and you never waste it, somebody in your surroundings do that twice. So that's a real issue that is so near to us. And are we recycling? How many of you took the second cup to pour the coffee this morning? But is, can't you use the same one? That's easy. It's not dirty. Yeah, that's that's good. That's brilliant. Third cup of coffee. Yeah, that's that's great. That's the first step. That's what we can do. So if I would remind you that this, that the uh, sentence of where well, if you're not building a business case, people won't listen. So there's a, a second equation of my life. It's called iPad, because impact to the planet Earth equals population, affluence, and technology. Population meaning more people there are, more impact they'll do to the earth. Uh, affluence, it's easy. It's being rich or having a lot of things and a lot of stuff. Everybody wants to have an iPhone, a computer. Um, when you're 18, you dream about Tesla and, 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 and maybe flying to, to other parts of the world. And uh, so if we will reduce the number of population, Earth can survive, but are we Hitlers? No. If we keep everyone poor, they won't uh, also, the, 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 the impact to the Earth will be minimal. But 
everyone deserves to live a quality life. Meaning that the, the third thing is technology, which either can be dirty and make a bad impact to the earth, or it could be good. And here, where clean tech comes in. And uh, clean tech is, yeah, it's, it's a process product or a service that reduces environmental, uh, negative environmental impacts through significant energy efficiency improvements, sustainable use of resources, and uh, environmental protection activities. And this is where, where I, uh, I, I want to talk with you. Uh, you either in, the, in that moment where you are looking for the way in your life, or already found it and, and going on the path, or you will be. So think. Uh, think about s some of the ways how you can follow your dream and don't forget clean tech. You can either work in renewable energy, which is one of the fastest growing industries in the world. You can also think about circular economy, which is very simple when uh, waste of one product can become a resource for another one. And this is recycling and upcycling things. You can think about water management, because water is the most expensive resource that we have. You can think about sustainable mobility, and it's not only those cool electric cars, it's also public transport, walking more, using car sharing, carpooling, and, and, and bicycling. So be sustainable when you move. Also, it's resource and material efficiency, so it was really nice to, to see the TED talk uh, uh, before about uh, um, clothes and, 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 and environmentally friendly uh, textile in the fashion industry, but there's so much more. There's bioplastics and all other uh, recycled materials. So I always choose when I buy, I start to, uh, I, I try to, to buy eco label things that were recycled. And then there's energy efficiency. It's not only in our uh, city, in our urban environment, the LEDs that are so much better uh, for our eyes and for the quality. Uh, and, and light pollution, but it's the, 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 the energy efficiency is really close to us. Do you turn off the lights when you leave the room? Do you, uh, when you wash the teeth, is your tapas running? Think about these things, it's easy. So the thing is that being sustainable is being smart. And waste is stupid. And you know that, the, remember in, in, in the beginning I said that the governments and companies, they don't want to waste uh, money because it's stupid. But what actually, what they do, sometimes they you choose the, the short-sighted uh, way, the easier way. Because, well, clean tech is about using resources efficient or recycling. Maybe it's expensive to, to do that right now, but in the long term, it's so much more expensive to find another planet. Because we have only one. There is no planet B, right? So if you are not building a business case out of sustainability, people will stop listening. So clean tech is a set of business cases that are about sustainability. So start listening, and when you will be looking for your way in your life, do that by saving the planet. Thank you.